and welcome back to the channel once again. Today we have a little something different than just a replay. Uh, one of my fans, <laughs> actually one of my friends who just follows the channel, <laughs> right as I'm doing the video he just he pops up and sends me a message, I'll check that out later, wanted to do me, wanted to ask me to do a video on the Cromwell B, also known as the Bromwell, because he had a pretty pretty crazy replay replay he sent me and uh, they played with the Cromwell so here he goes then Cromwell B I wouldn't call it a review but just to sum up why you need a Cromwell B in your life because this is one hell of a tank first up firepower so firepower well actually the Cromwell B's firepower is identical to, to the Cromwell the, the standard Cromwell's firepower Jump quickly, jump into the comparison. Just, well, gotta switch it up to the right crew. As you can see, it's just identical in every way. So, if you like the Cromwell, this is right up your alley. Well, what do we have for stats? Well, you get uh, the pretty good 145 pen on the standard rounds with 135 damage, which is not bad for the tier 6 medium. You got premium rounds with 202 penetration, which is pretty decent. Well, you wouldn't want to fight a, a tier 8 heavy from the front, well, but that's also because you don't have the held or armor to do so, so you always you always want to be flanking in the Cromwell, because it also has the mobility to do so. We'll go into that in more detail on the mobility just a bit later. But it has the mobility to always keep flanking, so you don't actually need a crazy amount of pen on your standard or premium rounds. Rate of fire, it's crazy high. Nearly 19 rounds a minute with my crew. Around 3.2 seconds reload time, which gives you a 2.5k average damage per minute, which for a tier 6 medium is really, really, really good. Definitely, if you if you catch somebody one-on-one, -on -one, an equal tier medium, there's almost no chance that they will out-TPM you in the fight. Unless you're really unlucky, bounce a lot of shells or miss a lot of shells. Because this thing, on the move, particularly on the move, is not very accurate. The dispersion values are a bit high. And as you can see, it, can, it can't actually fit vertical stabilizers. Because, well, if it could, it might just be a little bit too strong. But, well, you just have to deal with that. Get 2.1 second aim time, so that's not too bad. And with my crew I got 0.33 accuracy, which is fairly decent if you want to snipe, but as I with the dispersion values, the gun can be a bit derpy at times, so definitely when, when you, you, you're moving at high speeds, stop, and then if you have to aim in, it does take a while because of the dispersions, uh, dispersion values are so high, so you have to keep that in mind when you're doing drive-bys or try to circle somebody or just start chasing somebody it's not always easy <laughs> to connect those shells with the dispersion values but this little tank has quite a bit of firepower definitely on tier 6 I don't think there are many tanks that can outgun it definitely not with the DPM it has It's uh, and of course we nearly forget it has 8 degrees of gun depression which is pretty good for working rich lines it's not 10, it's not 12, it's definitely not 15 at the the Swedish tanks on tier 6 have, but 8 degrees is really really good. The T-125 also has 8 degrees and that thing is a beast on ridge lines. Uh, the only thing you have to keep in mind is you have 8 degrees on the front and the side, but on the back because of whatever this is, it's just a cover for the engine and your high exhaust, you actually don't have gun depression over the back. The tank actually can't depress the gun over the back, the gun, I think it has 2 degrees um, elevation over the back, it can't even get uh, get depression, it's just two pr I think it's 2 degrees elevation so if you have to shoot over the back you're best to to drive away in not in a straight line but in a diagonal line and so that your turret is actually facing over over the, the, the corner and not the back because you wouldn't be able to shoot then, so you have to keep that in mind when you're running away from somebody in a Cromwell B well I think that kind of sums it up for firepower, we still have the turret reverse piece is an insane 52.33 degrees a second that's that's just uh, this thing, this thing is basically a light tank if you just look at mobility and everything 
it's, it sometimes does feel like you're playing a light tank, just with a little less fuel range. But I think that was it for firepower. Let's see what's next. Survivability? I think we'll be over that one quickly. Okay, survivability. Well, I think we'll come back to the survivability onion in just a second, because I do think it it's very much applicable to the Cromwell B. So, what do we have? 750 hit points. Pretty standard for a tier 6 medium. Nothing special. Hull armor. 63 at the front, 42 at the, back, at the side, sorry. And 31 at the back. You're not gonna bounce a lot of shells with that. Uh, unless you're facing tier... tier uh, no, it doesn't get... It doesn't get matched up with the three steer fours with bad penetration guns. But the thing is, your armor is as flat as a pancake. <laughs> this is the only angled part of the tank. It's flat, flat, everything's flat. So you're just a big box. And well your side armor of forty two isn't if you're facing tier fours you can try to angle and bounce, but facing tier fives and tier sixes just don't bother. <laughs> it's just don't get shot. That's the because if you get shot, you get pinned. It's pretty much as simple as that. I'm not gonna bounce a lot of shells. The third front has a bit more armor, 76. Uh, but then again, it's it's also flat. Even if you're using your eight degrees of gun depression, you're not gonna bounce a lot with your turret. You you can get the occasional lucky bounce, but don't expect too much from the turret. Turret side is 63, same as the whole front. But well, then again, it's it's super flat, no angle. So, yeah, don't expect to bounce anything with that either. And third rear is 57 millimeters. so... All in all, this thing does not have a lot of armor. So that's well, why we'll be using the engine. Don't be there. Well, that's kind of difficult. I think it just comes down to not sitting in front of uh, enemy guns. Definitely not when you're bottom tier, because you get two shot by tier 8 heavies like the IS-3, so don't sit in front of big guns. Don't be identified, don't be acquired, let's take those two things together, because in World of Tanks they kind of mean the same, don't be spotted. And with the full camo crew, like you'll see in the replay that I've co got coming up, uh, my friend actually has a full camo crew on his Cromwell, this thing is rather sneaky. And you have a good view range, so you, if you're at the edge of your view range, it's kind of hard to get spotted with a full camo crew. Don't be engaged, the Cromwell is super fast, try to flank with it. If you can at all, <laughs> let let enemy heavy. If, if you're engaging heavies or tank destroyers mostly, mediums and lights are a bit more difficult to flank, but you can always try. Uh, just have them shooting at your teammates, <laughs> if you can at all, and then you can come into their side and farm a lot of damage. So be flanking. Don't get hit. You have the mobility to dodge and weave. Um, you got if you have a camo crew. You don't get spotted, so if you can get spotted, you don't get hit, obviously. And then penetrated, well, good luck, you're not gonna bounce anything with the Cromwell B. I'm very sorry, guys. <laughs> it's just the way it is. And don't be affected. Well, I think in World of Tanks that pretty much comes down to taking critical damage. And it doesn't feel like the Cromwell is very prone to critical damage. Ever so oft often you get hit in the engine, you get hit in the Amrak, but... Well, that happens in every tank. It's not like you're driving a Leopard PTA or a Tiger 1, which which take critical damage with every hit they take. I believe my first game in Tiger 1 was uh, engine fire, Amorag damage, double, and uh, the second engine fire with three shots I was dead. That was, uh, but you don't get that in the Cromwell. So I think that sums it up for survivability. Next up is mobility, where this tank really, really shines. So, mobility. This is where the tank really shines. It only weighs 28 and a half tons and gets a 650 horsepower engine which puts a specific power down of 22.91 horsepower per ton. Which really gives this tank very very good acceleration. This thing can keep up with most light tanks at, uh, at tier 6. And I think it even it has faster acceleration than the Type 64 if I'm not mistaken. And top speed is 64 kilometers an hour so that is... and it does maintain that top speed very easily, it gets there fast, it maintains the top speed. You can really just cruise around the map at 64 without many problems. 20 kilometers per hour uh, backwards, which is quite fast if you have to fall back over a ridge or something. And then the traverse speed is just ridiculous, 
uh, degrees per second. I think th that's just basically light tank. And that's also one of the key differences between the Cromwell Berlin and uh, standard Cromwell. Let's quickly jump into the... Well, it doesn't really... That's okay. I thought I still had my, my own crew selected. It has nearly... It has about 15 degrees per second uh, more traverse speed. I'm not sure why it why it does over the regular Cromwell, but that's a big boost. That is a really this is this is the difference between medium tank and light tank <laughs> traverse speed in my opinion. So you, you it's very easy to just circle people. It's very fast about over the battlefield. You can just you can do anything with this thing. It's so fast, so nimble. That's one of the reasons I lo I like it so much. So that. I think that sums it up for mobility. Uh, let's quickly go over concealment. Okay, so concealment. Uh, stationary, you got 17.4% uh, camo, and when you're shooting, you got 4.3. On the move, you got 13.8, which is actually have a lot of camo on the move compared to stationary. And when you fire, you've got 3.42% camouflage. Um, that's with my crew. In the replay, the player who plays the game actually has a full camo crew, so you'll see his camo is far superior to mine. But all in all, I don't think this is pretty bad. I don't think this is a bad camo. I think it's pretty good. I'm not, I'm, I'm not actually so familiar with the camouflage numbers as to give a really give an opinion on it. But uh, this, I do feel like it's the Cromwell B can be pretty, pretty stealthy. Uh, well, definitely on tier six. Not not everybody in tier six has a, a has a good crew, so you can definitely exploit that. And also, when you're facing tier five, tier four opponents, they have pretty bad view range as it is. If they don't have a good crew, well, then you can just abuse that. Well, on tier eight, uh, view range does get a bit higher, so you have to watch out there because well, this thing does not have preferential matchmaking, of course. And I think that's it for for uh, for concealment. Don't know what else I can say about it. Let's go to spotting. Well, yeah, spotting, view range, and such. So spotting. Um, with my crew, I have 427 meters view range, which isn't bad. I have uncoded optics. I have 90% situational awareness. I don't have recon yet, but the highest you can get this this view range. I believe is 436. Uh, in the replay, uh, he does have max view, max view range, not max view range, but the maximum view range you can get on the Cromwell B. He's got all the skills for it, so you won't actually be able to get maximum maximum uh, spotting range unless you use Binox, which I do not. Uh, I wouldn't use Binox on a Cromwell. Because you're just sacrificing mobility for five meters or less. No, it's not going to be five. But it's going to be definitely less than ten meters view range extra to get to that max view range. So really, if you just run coded optics, get a skilled crew, and you'll be just under the maximum view range, which isn't too bad. Definitely at tier six, nobody has max view range with coded optics unless you're a light tank. So you do have that advantage. So. That's really it for view for spotting because well signal range doesn't really matter. You get 621 signal range. This thing has a more powerful radio than the standard Cromwell does, but I really don't see the po points in going into much detail on it because it's it's radio range. Nobody cares about it. So I think it's time to to jump into the gameplay. Oh wait, one more thing. If you're still not convinced about how good this thing is, this crew. You can see they are males, but it act it's actually a female crew. I'll explain. When you buy this this thing in the premium shop, it includes a crew, this crew, with that comes with Brothers in Arms, but Brothers in Arms is not the first skill. It's a zero skill, so you can't unlearn it, and it doesn't count as a skill, so my six cents, my repairs, this is my first skill. I'm actually on my second skill, on this on this crew. Well you can see it's my third, but the Brothers in Arms does not count. Just like on a female crew, it does not 
it uh, it gets the the Sisterhood of Steel, I believe it is on female crew, just gets that for free without it counting as a skill. So this is really strong because you get brothers in arms, and then you then you start your first skill. So that's definitely yeah, something you have to take in account. And sometimes Wargaming does sell other premium tanks also with a crew that comes equipped with brothers in arms, but it doesn't actually count as a zero skill. It's it's going to be a first skill. The only tanks that come with this kind of crew are the Berlin Quattro, yeah, Squatro, the Cromwell Buter Berlin, the IS-2 Ber uh, Berlin, the ISU 122S, and uh, the T-3485 Rudy. They all get this crazy crew. Uh, in the replay, you're gonna see my friend is just nearing his fifth skill, so it's actually a fourth skill because of the brothers in arms but it's well it looks like five skill but in training in experience it's it counts as a fourth skill so i think it's high time that i stop talking <laughs> and you can all enjoy some ace tanker gameplay in the cromwell b so let's jump into that so here we are on sand river assault uh this is stop messing playing in his cromwell b and it's uh they have to defend and well, I wouldn't dare say it's a tier 7 battle because every every team has one tier 7 tank. So the tier 7s are good players, they're gonna have a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, but we'll see how they... I don't actually know how they did this battle. We'll see how it goes. His ammo loadout is pretty standard. 40 AP, 20 AP CR, and 4 HE. I think that's nearly the same as I have on my Chrome OB. And you'll see he's gonna need a little gonna need most of his most of his ammo this map. This is uh, not gonna be an easy carry. Not in the slightest. So he's heading to the, the usual position which every tank with gun depression or every tank with view range should really go to when they're defending on Sand River. And it is and it's this mid ridge because you can get vision all over this area and if you're super sneaky and the enemy has bad view range you can actually already put in some damage. As you can see, he doesn't get spotted yet. He puts in two rounds, still not spotted. That's the camo crew that's uh, that's working here. And possibly bad crews on the enemy team. He is still not spotted. Now he gets spotted, I believe, because he gave you two. No, no, not even spotted. <laughs> As you can see, he's very sneaky. He gets spotted now because T25-2 came over the ridge here. And that's fairly close to him. Because they were driving here, so they. So it's this little different, this little difference that made it. Yeah, that he got spotted. And he puts another round in the crumble. He's already 718 damage, and he got spotted once. That crumble is just gonna die now. He's, he's got no. He's also stuck. I believe. At least his gun is stuck. And he's down. That's one crumble down. He spots the Dicker Max and the Nashorn. Oh, and he didn't actually spot the Nashorn. Sorry, that was outside of the view range. He's, he might have spotted the, the Dicker Max. So he's just gonna continue to work this ridge line. Uh, there's not really a threat to the north, so he can uh, try to put in some shots um, towards the 9-0 line. Because the Nashorn and the Dicker Max should not have shots on him. He just has to watch out because at that range, and there aren't really any bushes, even with his camel crew, he's most likely to get spotted. So we'll have to play it careful. Because if the Dicker Max and the S1 hit him at the same time, I think he's left with like 200 health, not a lot more than that. They do hit hard, those tier 6 German tank destroyers. Definitely have to watch out for those, definitely with the Dicker Max. It always surprises me how much alpha it has. He spots the DOI, which is. <laughs> So slow that he is still not at the front line, and he starts shooting the side. But let's know why. And he's really unlucky with the shots here, having to load premium shells, even bouncing his first premium shell. But it did went on the super angle plate, and the uh, second one went into the turret. But finally, he starts spending the OI with his premium rounds. But well, at this range, it's nearly it's 440 meters range. It's not easy to bend in a while with the, the Cromwell. Instantly switches back to to, to the standard rounds to not waste them because he's definitely 
gonna need them on the OI later on. Just eating this Cromwell's hit points. Sadly, the Cromwell managed to put in some runs into him, even though he's, he was fairly well in cover between the rocks. Trying to find some shots on the OI again, but well, it's the turret. Well, it does get the side here. As you can see, the balloon just, just keeps being. Just keeps being big. It doesn't really get a lot smaller. That's mostly because, well, dispersion. Now it starts shrinking. Because it was moving a bit and it was turning a stir. Whatever you do in the crumble, once you're not stationary, the, the balloon does get very big. And even when you're shooting, it, it, it really expands a lot. So those guys are in cover. He was doing actually pretty well. He's, he's already up to 2.4k damage and nearly 600 assistance. But he sees the M7, thinks about going after him, I believe, but decides not to. Instead, going towards a mid ridge and seeing what he can what he can shoot. And then he spots the SDRV and the T34 there, and he just put, starts <laughs> very very unlucky that that one didn't pin. It actually uh, actually went onto the side of the turret. And as you can see, the crumble his armor does occasionally bounce the shell, but don't expect it to do that very often. T34, of course, having a very low caliber gun, uh, which also added to the fact that he could bounce that shell. He was, if the T34 was using the 76mm, bounce probably wouldn't have happened. Just got a little bit lucky there. He's looking, f looking at the Cromwell and the OI, which probably will get spotted by his teammates very soon. Sees the Dicker Max, checks if the Dicker Max has line of fire on him. He doesn't, so he's safe. Starts shooting up the Cromwell again. Will he get the kill? Yes, he will. And now the OI again. A tough not to crack. He has to look pretty. He's not gonna go to the OI with standard rounds unless he's next to him. There's just no way. And bouncing premium rounds again. Again, bouncing premium rounds. He's really having a tough time with the OI this, this game. He's there's not he's I, how many premium rounds did he fire at the OI already? Thirteen? I think he fired all of them at the OI. Thirteen premium rounds. And still hasn't managed to kill him. He gets spotted by those two sneaky dinosaurs still in the back there. And he's making a way his way towards the SDRV. Which of course he has to watch out for because that thing has a pretty nasty outcome around tier six. But if he can use the rich line here, he should be able to get him. The SCRV just doesn't want to shoot him, it appears he just wants to run away. Or he wants to lure him into the dip. I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. Using 8 degrees of gun depression on the Cromwell here to get a kill on the SCRV. Just a bit before RD, RD would steal his kill away. Or did he steal the RD's kill? I leave that up to debate. He's already on 3k damage. He's having a pretty monster game. Reloading HE now because, well, if you're shooting at a Dicker Max and an s -horn, it's not a bad idea to load HE. Those things don't have a lot, don't have a lot of armor. He managed to pen his HE on the SU-8, which is very, uh, very easy, I think. Because if you hit it on the front, I don't think it actually always goes through. I'm very cautious about shooting HE at artillery because most of most more often than not, you don't actually uh, don't actually do full damage with your HE. Because well, if it's a GWE 100, for example, you have to hit him in, the, in the, the unarmored top. If you hit the hull while you're just shooting at only 100 chassis. Sadly, he did have to take a hit from the from the na from, oh, sorry, Dicker Max there, but he managed to shut him down with his HE ram. Now going after the Nashorn and using this hill to try and spot him. Did he get spotted? No, he did not. That's his camo crew at work again. He's not firing it, he's just reloading an HE shell so he gets... Actually, he didn't actually have to fire an HE shell here. He probably... 120, he has 135 uh, hit points, so he would have killed him with AP anyway. But it's always nice to, to be able to use your HE effectively, because you don't know, often get to do that. Here we are again, shooting, <laughs> shooting at the OI at max range. He's gonna shoot one. It bounces again. He's gonna shoot the second one. It bounces again, and then he decides, "Fuck it, I'm not gonna bounce on the OI any longer," and decides to close the distance because, well, he's, he's shot 15 premium rounds at the OI. He still hasn't managed to kill him. I would be getting frustrated by now as well. 
but UI is the last tank alive. He already secured a top gun. He probably already has high caliber as well, with, with nearly 4k damage in the tier 6 battle. And then 1200 spotting as well. No doubt this is going to be an ace tanker. Very, very, very strong round. And just really showcases what you can do in a Cromwell B. If you're in a good matchup on a good map, and if you're a good player, you can really, really. So let's see how it looks in the post-game stats. So here we are in the post-game results. Not surprising, he picked up an ace tanker for his amazing, amazing game. Got a spotter, a little medal, so, but more importantly he got a high caliber and the top gun for his, well let's say 4k damage in the Cromwell B, 6 kills. That gives him 1,770 base experience, which is a very, very, very strong round. And let's have a look. He fired 52 rounds, of which 47 hit, and then th only 31 pens. Just, and I think most of those non-pens were even his premium rounds that he bounced on the OI. Just showing how ridiculous the OI is on on tier six. I recently finished my OI grind and oh my god I despise the tank I just didn't have any fun playing it but when you're at long range in an OI you really <laughs> your armor is just ridiculous as you can see how much you bounce there with his two it, his premium shells of 202 penetration OI is 170 millimeters of armor still didn't manage to, to pen him there he also got 1200 spotting damage and tr he traveled three kilometers, well, he drove around the map two times, basically, picking up kills uh, and damage left and right. He managed to get 50k profit, even with resupplying for his ammunition for 45k. Uh, that was, well, how much premium shells were that? I think that were, near. this was nearly 20 premium shells. So, if you have a beast game, it doesn't matter if you shoot full premium, you'll still make a, you'll still make a profit. And this was during the the three times crew experience event, so he's gonna be his crew is gonna be very happy uh, when they reach their fifth skill because with these games like these, it's gonna be pretty fast. Uh, well, I think that was it for today. I do hope you enjoyed this video. It was a bit different than usual, but hopefully you liked it nonetheless. Please leave your feedback in the comments, and I'll see you next time.